Welcome to Cardinal Glass Industries. At Cardinal Glass, we lead the industry in the development, design, and fabrication of glass products for windows and doors. The Cardinal team of more than 6,500 employees nationwide is proud of our commitment to safety and training. Our focus on the research and development of new products allows us to turn fresh ideas into useful glass products for homeowners in North America and overseas, while our commitment to superior customer service keeps us competitive in the marketplace. Here at Cardinal Glass, we are experts in the automated and manual handling of flat glass of all types. Even if you have previous powered industrial truck experience in an industrial setting, it is unlikely that you have operated this equipment to world-class Cardinal Glass standards. Safety is our first priority, and handling glass at Cardinal is a unique experience. Glass has many unique properties that dictate how it can be handled, stored, and transported. One of the most important aspects of your education as a new powered industrial truck operator will be your training in material handling. We have created this video in order to give you an overview of the types of material we handle and some of the unique characteristics of each type. Following the guidelines in this video will help ensure your safety, reduce incidents, and improve the quality of our products. As a PIT driver, I impact safety on a daily basis. I'm responsible for my safety as well as the safety of others. We know you're eager to start learning, so let's talk material handling. First, we are going to cover different types of powered industrial trucks, also referred to as PITs. Powered industrial trucks are any equipment powered with a battery that pulls, pushes, lifts, or moves material at our facilities. Everyone within the IG company uses different forms of PITs at their facilities, with the most common type being a sit-down forklift. There are different PITs within the IG company, starting with our Ricos down to our Tuggers. The role of a PIT operator at our facilities is to safely transport glass and other materials while protecting pedestrians and product. A group of specially trained PIT operators will unload and load incoming and outgoing product on semi-trailers. Many of our PITs are equipped with aftermarket safety features. Blue lights project a warning light in the forklift's direction of travel to alert pedestrians to their presence. Red side lights project a warning for a three-foot pedestrian no-go zone which allows safe clearance around this equipment. Next we will look at how to perform a pre-use inspection. Inspections are the most important part of beginning your work on a PIT. Various facilities have both electronic and paper inspection forms. Your on-site training will include familiarizing yourself with which documentation your facility is using. Poorly inspected vehicles cause hazards. Regardless of what format your facility is using, it is your responsibility to inspect the PIT prior to use. This is done each time you use equipment for the first time during your shift. I found a cracked hydraulic hose during my pre-use inspection that was leaking. I was thankful I found that before I had the load up in the air. The load could have fallen and damaged property or hurt someone. Should you find a deficiency during your PIT inspection, it will need to be taken out of service. Your facility will instruct you on how to properly proceed with this process. The majority of PITs are powered by batteries. Batteries are charged in one of three ways. Some of the smaller PITs are plugged into an outlet similar to many household appliances. Our facilities also charge larger PITs with opportunity chargers. An opportunity charger is a stationary charger that has cables that connect to a PIT battery. The third and final way to assure your PIT is charged is by simply changing out the battery. When changing out a battery in any PIT, make sure you are wearing your facility's required PPE, including, but not limited to the following, protective clothing, eye, skin, and face protection. Be sure to read and understand the manufacturer's instructions on use. Prior to changing the battery, make sure you locate the closest eye wash and shower station. To change a battery, set the e-brake on the equipment dismount the PIT and don the proper PPE. Before attempting to remove the battery, assure the battery is disconnected. Lift any covers or lids and check for clearance. Check the route of removal to assure it does not pin you against any other object. Once the battery is removed from the PIT, place it directly on an approved stand for charging. All lift trucks must bear a capacity data plate. This plate specifies the load each forklift can safely lift at different mast angles or when fitted with an attachment. The plate should display the load capacity, lift height, and load center distance, brand and model number. 
The operator should also see that this is replaced when it becomes illegible or is missing. Lifting capacity changes when a mast is used with approved special attachments. These attachments must also be load rated. The weight of attachments must be considered in regard to data plate capacities. One of the leading causes of operator injury and death are tip overs. Statistics show an average of 85 deaths and 96,700 incidents annually with a forklift overturning being the most common. OSHA estimates that if a company provided more stringent training, incidents would be reduced by up to 70%. At Cardinal, there are tasks which can dramatically affect your stability triangle if done improperly. We will review these later in the video. Let's take a moment to discuss how to safely get on and off your equipment. There's a proper technique to use to avoid injury regardless of what type of PIT you are using. We refer to this as three points of contact. We will demonstrate three points of contact for you using a sit-down forklift as most of our facilities utilize these. Please know that all PITs have an appropriate way of mounting utilizing your three points of contact. Make sure that your equipment steps, floor, and seat are clear of any material. Ensure that your grab handles are secure and in good condition. Be square to the machine as you approach it. Place one foot and two hands on the machine when getting on. Only use approved handholds for supporting yourself with three points of contact when climbing in and out. Once you are seated in the operator's position, be sure to connect your seatbelt. When you are in the operator's position, it is very important to remember that your body must remain inside the protective cage at all times. As you dismount, Make sure the ground is free of debris or damage. Never jump off your equipment. I spent all day working safely, and at the end of the day, I was in a hurry to finish my shift and go home. I wasn't watching what I was doing, and before my lift came to a complete stop, I tried to get off and twisted my knee. Make sure you dismount in a reverse order the way that you mounted the forklift. Before we move any material, let's discuss the stability triangle. The underside of a lift truck is designed around an imaginary three-point suspension, which forms the stability triangle. Because of this stability triangle, lift trucks differ from other vehicles, like cars or trucks, which operate on four points of suspension, one for each wheel. A lift truck's three-point suspension includes two points at each end of the fixed front axle and a third point at the center of the rear pivoting axle. The lift truck's center of gravity is located within this imaginary stability triangle. The lift truck is most stable when the center of gravity remains within the confines of the stability triangle. The center of gravity, without a load on it, is right below where the driver sits. When it comes to forklift operations, we must be concerned with the combined center of gravity. This combination includes the lift truck and the load it is picking up. Let's start by looking at the center of gravity of the load which is known as the load center. In a uniform load, such as palletized goods or a bale of material, this can be more readily determined. For example, take a uniform load on a 48-inch long pallet. The load center would be at 24 inches. However, loads can often be uneven and include non-symmetrical items. In cases like these, extra care must be taken to estimate the center of gravity. The data plate located on your lift truck will tell you what your maximum lifting capacity is, given a stated load center. The further your load is away from the mast, the less lifting capacity and stability your forklift has. As we discussed earlier, the lift truck also has a center of gravity, which shifts once the truck picks up a load. When the load is lifted, then the center of gravity moves forward. Care must be taken to maintain the center of gravity within the stability triangle of the forklift by not lifting more than the maximum allowable given the load center. A lift truck becomes unstable when the center of gravity shifts outside of the stability triangle, creating a greater risk for tip over. Actions that might cause the center of gravity to shift outside the stability triangle are abrupt turns, load too heavy for forklift rating, load not centered on forks, unsecured and shifting load, carrying loads on forks away from the mast, driving down an incline with forks facing forward, driving on uneven ground, carrying load too high on the mast, driving and lifting with forks and mast tilted away from the forklift, driving too fast during operation. A reminder, never 
combine two motions into one. Transporting racks of varying types, full or empty, is one primary use for PITs at Cardinal. You will be carrying loaded and unloaded racks. Your first step is making sure the load is secure to travel. This entails assuring the racks are properly stacked and any glass or material is secured by a strap or other means. Next, center your load to the forks. Drive into the load until the load rest is met. Lift carefully, minding to raise to the minimum height needed to be off the ground to transport the load. Depending on the load, tilt may be needed. Evaluate the stability of the material being transported. As you begin to move, keep two items in mind, the stability triangle and the path you will travel. Always have a clear view beyond your load. If the load obstructs view, travel in reverse with the load behind you. We have standards we use to safely stack and move material within our facilities. Here are some of the most common. Short back stock racks will be transported no higher than six racks at a time from the front. High back racks are to be transported no higher than five high from the front. 26 slot, 52 slot, and 52 slot stackable bungees will be transported no higher than three high from the front of the rack. 17 and 30 slot bungees will be transported no higher than three high from the front. Wood and plastic A-frames may be carried no higher than three high. When transporting and handling full racks, only lift them as far off the floor as needed to move them safely. Training is the primary means of keeping your employees safe in a loading dock environment. There are many mechanical devices that, if used and installed properly, can help reduce potential hazards in these areas. A common incident that occurs at a loading dock is when drivers mistakenly pull away while a powered industrial truck is still inside the trailer. I think the biggest safety concern at the loading dock is when the wheels fall in between the plate and the trailer. This can cause both employee injury and destruction of property. The best way to prevent this from occurring is to ensure the wheels are chalked. Another frequent problem is trailer creep. Trailer creep happens when trailers gradually move away from the dock because of the ongoing impact and momentum of forklifts traveling in and out of them. Standard practice has been to use wheel chocks to prevent this from happening, but rear impact guard locking devices, also known as RIGs, have since proved to be the better solution. Chocks have been found to provide insufficient pullout resistance. They may slip on the ground and placing the chocks itself presents a hazard to the employee. Chocking also lacks an embedded communication system to let the truck driver, powered industrial truck operator, and dock personnel know they are in place. RIG-based locking devices feature a full rotating hook that automatically locks to the trailer's RIG. This design prevents many types of trailer separation. Most RIG-based restraints also incorporate communication systems that indicate when they are engaged and when it is safe to enter the trailer to load and unload. Trailer jacks are devices placed under the front of a trailer when it is unhooked from a truck. A trailer jack will help support the trailer when the weight of the forklift is towards the front. They also help support the trailer in the event of a collapse of the dollies. Dock levelers and plates are automated devices to assist in bridging the gap between the truck and the trailer as well as leveling the heights of the different surfaces. Employees are trained on the proper and safe use of dock plates. Poorly placed dock plates may cause the forklift and or loads to overturn. Dock plates in our work environment are typically stationary and attached to a dock leveler. Dock levelers are permanent devices that are operated either by hand or by hydraulics. Only qualified personnel are authorized to repair a dock leveler. Prior to entering a trailer with a PIT, you must inspect it for damage and remove any straps. Be sure to remove any dunnage from the floor prior to use. If the trailer is full, make sure you are inspecting as you unload and remove straps as needed. Whenever a trailer is damaged, you must inform the carrier and take it out of service. Do not reload until repairs are completed or it passes inspection by a qualified individual. Communicating with the driver is critical to ensure they do not depart before the load is complete. Next, let's address ramp safety. 
Always assure you are traveling at a speed slow enough to make a smooth transition during elevation change. Sit down lifts are heavier in the rear to compensate for heavier loads being carried in the front. This uneven weight distribution can make a forklift difficult to handle and creates a higher risk of tip over. Always make sure your load is facing uphill. Never raise a load or turn on a ramp. Forklifts are turned by the rear wheels, causing the rear end to swing outward. This also increases the chance of tipping over during tight turns. Special consideration should be given during inclement weather. Ramps should be cleared prior to use with no snow or ice buildup whenever possible. Lifting materials to the mezzanine can pose additional challenges. Forklifts are often used to raise hefty loads to considerable heights, a combination that always has an increased risk if proper precautions are not taken. Loads are carried in the front of a forklift, which can obstruct the view of the driver. Never combine two motions into one. Come to a complete stop and square the lift facing the overhead door. Then lift the door either by controls at your level or working with a spotter above. Assure spotter safety by seeing that your spotter has on fall protection or other means of guarding. Ensure you have the right lines of communication between spotters and the lift driver. Never allow pedestrians to walk underneath a raised load. When removing material from a mezzanine, never combine two motions into one. For example, turning and lowering a load at the same time. Lowering material is similar to raising material. Slow and steady wins the race on this one. An example of a situation that can be made worse by rushing is moving coffins up and down from a mezzanine. If a driver moves too quickly, a coffin will start to bounce. When a coffin starts to bounce, it could pose a safety hazard by causing damage to the coffin. It is common practice to stack racks to a level of four high in our warehouse space. Here are the steps to stack these safely. The forklift operator will approach the zone the stock will be located in. The operator will line up his stock in front of a zone, whether one or two high, and approach the front pallet leaving a foot of space to be able to lift free of getting caught. At no time should an operator stack a fork pallet on top of a stack of pallets three high, nor should they stack three pallets on top of one pallet. When stacking four racks high, create two equal stacks of the same racks. Make sure the tips of your forks are not sticking out the back of the pallet and that your load is tilted back. Raise the stock up into the air until you have raised the pallet stack to the point of having enough clearance between the pallet being stacked on and the pallets being put into the zone. Proceed slowly until you have the front of the pallet aligned with the stack below it. Lower the pallet onto the front pegs. Once these are in place, tilt forward and allow your forklift to roll back slowly. While doing this, you can set the back pegs. Lower the forks until they no longer bear any weight of the pallet stack that you just set down. Ensure there is enough clearance above the glass in the rack that received the pallet. Make sure to get off your lift and check that all the pallets are in the pegs and properly secured. Back out until your forks are clear to lower the mast. At this point, you may drive to your next task. Cardinal also stores material in racking. This material can be anything from glass on pallets to desiccant or cardboard. The operator is responsible for doing a visual inspection of the racking prior to placing material onto it. The purpose of this inspection is to verify integrity of the structure of the racking. While doing this visual, the operator is looking for dents, bends, wrinkles, collisions, or scraped paint on the support legs as well as the cross members. Also ensure that if your racking has beam clips that they are installed, undamaged, and locked properly. Racking inspections are critical to success in an ever-changing environment. Cardinal has a variety of different pieces of equipment that will require you to be specifically qualified to use. Your facility will provide the training necessary for you to become certified on these pieces of equipment. As a reminder, do not operate any piece of equipment that you are not certified to use. This training video is meant to familiarize you with our specific working environment as well as Cardinal's expectations for our PIT users. It is your first step toward being a certified powered industrial truck operator within our Cardinal family. We appreciate your dedication to a safe, productive, and healthy workplace.